welcome to People and Power. I'm Shireen al -Feki. In today's program, Death of the Dollar. Is the greenback losing its power? And rumble in the jungle, trouble over oil in Ecuador. We begin with a look at the U.S. economy, and more specifically, the dollar. Now, the dollar isn't just the United States currency, it's the world's currency. The one used for most business, whether it's buying a cup of coffee in America, trading oil from the Middle East, or financing a deal in Asia. Now, the dollar has been falling against other major currencies. Some economists think this is a good thing, that the dollar needs readjustment, and all of this is important for America to deal with some of its economic imbalances. But a sharp fall could trigger big economic problems in the United States. The fate of the dollar lies largely in the hands of those outside America. But what if foreigners lose faith in the American economy? What would happen to the dollar then? Max Kaiser is a financial activist with Karma Bank and a former Wall Street broker. Here's his perspective in Viewpoint. America, everyone agrees, it's a miracle economy with a booming GDP, low inflation, full employment and rising productivity. I believe, however, that America is standing on the edge of a financial precipice like the world has never seen. This precarious state of world financial affairs has been achieved because the rest of the world has been convinced to exchange their wealth for U.S. dollars. A U.S. dollar that America says is as good as gold. The United States came off the gold standard in August of 1971 by presidential executive order. Uh, and the reason is that the imbalances in that monetary system as it existed at that time were so uh, out of whack that the U.S. could no longer maintain any credibility in keeping the gold standard at $35 per ounce. When the gold standard was eliminated in 1971, you eliminated all of the discipline on monetary creation. Yes, for 30 years America has been inflating its money supply, which means that foreigners doing business with America don't get something for something. All of that monetary inflation means that the dollar gets devalued, massively devalued. Oh, gargantuanly devalued. Okay, bonjour. A petit steak, um, bon steak. Un bon steak. Oui. Uh, Vous acceptez un uh, dollar? Uh, oui, oui, c'est bon. It's good, it's gold. Oui, this is really gold. So why do America's trading partners accept this deal? Nothing for something. Is it because uh, they've been mesmerized? Or is it just a case of outright deception? The tricksters misdirect us away from the real inflation of the printing press and onto consumer price inflation, or CPI, an index based on a basket of consumer goods. You see, with everyone focused on the price of this basket of goods, they're not really focused on the real inflation that's happening in stocks, bonds, and real estate. So, should prices inconveniently rise in any given year, simply swap one item for another in the index like swapping hamburger for steak. So with steak going up 20% in my basket of goods and hamburger only going up 2% in my basket of goods, by swapping out hamburger for steak, I've magically erased 18% from the official inflation rate. This is how America's been able to under-report inflation. So another way that they under-report inflation is called geometric adjustment. This baguette, for example, has a certain geometric property which is counted in the basket of goods. But this year, by adjusting this bread in the basket, voila, less inflation. Now, for people like myself who are not easily conned, all we really need to do is to look at the official government's money supply numbers to get a sense of what the real inflation is. But here, Alan Greenspan, the maestro, comes up with his greatest illusion of all in the good as gold trick. He just stopped reporting the numbers. On March 23rd, 2006, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System said they will cease publication of the M3 monetary aggregate. 
M3 is one of the definitions of the total quantity of money in circulation. Well, my view is, is that they want to hide the truth, that they're creating too much money and that there's a lot of inflationary pressures in the pipeline. Well, if we no longer have the government's own numbers to tell us the truth, at least we have gold. Gold has always been a reliable indicator of which way inflation's going. Unless, of course, the central banks are flooding the market with gold, and maybe even flooding the market with gold they don't own, possibly flooding the market with gold that doesn't exist. Central banks have been active participants in the gold market. We see some of their activity um, when they make their announcements as to just hoarding some of their gold stock and some of their gold reserves. But they also do another thing surreptitiously. They lend gold to bullion banks, and the bullion banks in turn sell that gold in the market. It doesn't get recorded as a central bank sale. It gets recorded as a central bank loan, but it has a net effect uh, of depressing the gold price. God is the Gold Antitrust Action Committee formed in January of 1999 to expose the manipulation of the gold market. Uh, they've done it for many reasons, uh, to protect interests in the United States. It was the essence of the strong dollar policy of Treasury Secretary Rubin. Sounds like a praise and con, but even the establishment agrees. Chevreux Bank, a division of Credit Agricole, has issued this 56-page report that completely supports GATA's charges. On the geopolitical front, what if oil were priced in euros? Since the 1970s, oil has been priced in dollars. But then Saddam Hussein started pricing his oil in euros. And before too long, Saddam started making 17% more on his oil than his neighbors. He saw through the dollar scam. Now we'll never know how far this would have gone because of shortly thereafter, Iraq was invaded. Now Iran wants to open an oil bourse, trading oil only in euros, and setting an important marker for oil in euros. Well, it will be, if it is successful, uh, definitely it will provide, when the value of dollar is down, very keen opportunity or uh, a venue of sale of oil by other producers who would be unhappy at the time with the lower value of dollar and they like to come and sell their oil in the Iranian exchange, in the Iranian oil bourse, which is being traded at the time, or that is the intention, in euros, of course. That will be an advantage. In February of 2006, the U.S. Congress raised a debt ceiling to $9 trillion, the equivalent of 28 Eiffel Towers made entirely of gold. So how is America going to pay back these solid gold Eiffel Towers worth of debt? They rely entirely on foreign creditors to finance their economy. And yet, America's foreign policy at this point seems to be bomb the creditors. As hostilities escalate between America and these resource-rich countries, the central bankers of these countries begin dumping dollars for political reasons, as has been the case now with Venezuela, Syria, and Iran. For economic reasons, Sweden has dumped 17% of their dollar reserves. In March of 2006, the UAE has said that they would be diversifying 10% of their dollar reserves out of the U.S. dollar, right on the heels of the U.S. Congress's rejection of the Dubai ports deal. Uh, it's a clear sign of protectionism. And I think the view is clearly emerging that people recognize that dollars do not have any value. As more foreign banks realize that the dollars they hold are not as good as gold, look for a rush to the exits. The Asian Development Bank has recommended Asian economies to diversify out of the dollar, likening it to a bird flu. Unlikely, but once started, fast moving and deadly. And so here we are on the precipice of economic mayhem. Will the dollar survive?